The greatest improvement in my lifetime was made by a man in Memphis, Tennessee named Clarence Saunders, who started the first self-service store. If it had not been for self-service, I would not have been in the grocery business because I worked in my dad's store behind the counter and filling an order was just too much work. When I found out one cashier could essentially serve 15 customers at one time, she could check people out as fast as 15 women would shop, it began to look like a more exciting business. So self-service was the biggest thing that's happened in my lifetime in food retailing. The next important step was mechanical refrigeration and air conditioning. Uh, some of you, like Marvin Smith, have been in the meat business a long time. Recall we used to have cases with brine in each end and a little fan and overhead uh, cooler where you'd put 100 pound blocks of ice and try to keep the meat from spoiling. So refrigeration, which long brought air conditioning, was the next biggest step. The next step that is wondered why we didn't get it sooner was the shopping cart. A friend of mine in Oklahoma City invented the shopping cart. I had had the idea when a lady was pushing a baby carriage through the aisle and loading a few groceries in it, thought how nice that would be if you could shop that way. But unfortunately, our aisles were so narrow that nobody could pass if there's one baby carriage in the aisle. But Sil Goldman invented the shopping cart, and that was a big improvement. Now, the latest improvement, as I see it, is in scanning. Some of you have lived through the days when you used to use a little ad machine and then ring it up on a cash register. Then we got the departmentalized cash registers, and then long comes the fourth big change, which is scanning and uh, data processing operations and the electronic fund transfer and the banking system that we furnish in our stores. So that's enough of looking back, but let's make a few comments about uh, where we're going. It's only the dodo bird to tell me that flies backwards to see where it's been. Well, we've covered that enough, I think. Let's uh, look ahead and see where we're going. If we take the record that Publix has made, particularly in the past few years, we certainly have the brightest future that anybody could look forward to. I mentioned something yesterday that I might say again. When I went to Tampa and was made a manager of a Piggly Wiggly store in St. Petersburg, after about six weeks, and in six months, the store went from $1,300 a week to $6,600, which was phenomenal in those days. So I got promoted to the largest volume store in the chain, which was Winter Haven, in 1926. And I managed that store for four years. But from 1926 to 1930, the Wall Street crash, the banks went broke, the hurricanes hit Florida, the real estate boom was burst. So the same bright, young man that took a store doing 1,300 and put it up to six to 600, took a store doing 7,000 and took it down to 2,000. Why did I tell you that story? That's a pessimistic thing and kind of hard for me to admit. And it just tells you that we can't always go in one direction. And if we didn't have a good background and a firm hold on our business, I wouldn't be as optimistic as I am about our future. Last year, when Charlie Jr. told me we planned to open 28 stores, I shook my head and said, well, that's a 
probably more than we should try to open in one year. And, uh, but we did open 28, and we closed seven. This year, when he says we plan to open 35, I really have my not doubts that we can't open the stores, but the concern that we're going to have trouble getting properly trained people to man 35 new stores. I've been asked many times what was the most satisfaction I have gotten down through the years out of being in the business. And I said, it's watching people develop. At least 90% of our store managers and people above that level started with as bag boys. So in the past 56 years, I have seen a lot of you people and in the other divisions develop, and that's been a great deal of satisfaction to me. You've made me look good by the great job that you have done. Mark has mentioned that there's fewer people kind of looking for jobs now, and the supply and demand, we're going to have more difficulty than we've ever had. And again, when I'm asked, how many stores would you like to open? I'd say no more than we can properly man, than we can get public's people to operate. And that is a challenge. And it's not a challenge for management as much as it is for the people at store level that will be in contact with the new employees and encourage them to want to continue and make grocery business their career. Let me add to what Marcus said about the Bud's group put on such a terrific show yesterday in Lakeland, again here today. It's really a professional handle. Thursday would be in Jacksonville with about 350, 400 hour people. So I have to pinch myself to realize that uh, we uh, have grown the way we have.